So to build your pneumota, you're going to need some aluminium foil, some insulated copper wire, some screws and fasteners, a power pack, a sturdy piece of wood, two rigid copper wires, a set of strong magnets, a piece of styrofoam, a piece of sandpaper, four angle brackets, and a sharpened pencil on both sides. Now we're also gonna be using some tools to build our motor, a screwdriver, a multimeter, a pair of scissors, and some sticky tape. Okay, so first we're going to make our coil base by inserting the pencil into the styrofoam. It's quite simple. Now you want it to go about a quarter of the way down, so there's plenty of room for the commutator. So next, we're going to make the coil wrapping around the coil base. To start with, you need to strip the end of the copper wire so that it conducts electricity. For this, you'll need some sandpaper. And now we're going to wrap it around the base. Now it's up to you how much you actually wrap it, but the more turns that you have, as I'm sure you're familiar, the more torque your motor is going to be able to generate. So I like to wrap one side first and then move on to the other side. So now that we've wrapped it all up, we're going to cut one end. And now we simply need to sand this end and test that we've got an electrical connection. Okay. So we're gonna take our multimeter, we're gonna set it to beep mode. And what that means is when these two leads touch electrically, they're going to beep. And that means that if these two leads beep, we do have an electrical connection, but as you can see, we're not getting a beep, which means I haven't sanded off the copper wire effectively. So we've got to sand more copper wire. All right, let's do another test. Let's test this wire, just see if it's connect, if it's, there we go. All right, that wire is good but only in certain places, right? It's a bit intermittent. And so what we're gonna do to fix that, right? So we've got electrical connection, and now we're gonna go on to build the commutator. So before we build our commutator, we're going to improve the electrical connections of our coil. For this, we're gonna take some aluminum foil and wrap it around the edges of the coil that we've stripped. Depending on how confident you are and how you've wrapped it, you can use sticky tape to stick it down, but make sure you only put it just on the edge. You don't want to ruin any future electrical contact. Okay, so before we build our commutator, we're going to just double check the electrical connections we've made using a multimeter. And so the connections are good and we can proceed with making our commutator. Okay, so now we're gonna make our commutator. What you need is two rather large pieces of aluminum foil. What we're going to do is encase the pieces of the coil in this aluminum foil and then sticky tape it to the side of the pencil. Now it's very important that you get the alignment of your commutator and your coil right. Remember that when the coil is horizontal in the maximum torque position, your commutator should be in electrical contact. So what we want is to have our commutator like so where the two electrical contacts are going to be at a maximum point when this torque is at a maximum. When the coil is vertical, and remember we're talking about these coils of wire, not the bridge. When the coil is vertical, we want to have the gaps in the commutator horizontal. Right, so yeah, we've got the 
brushes, or sorry, we've got the bases of the commutator stuck in the positions that we're going to want them, right? When the coil is horizontal, the two ends of the commutator are horizontal. Now this could work as a motor already, although the contact wouldn't be very good. And what we're going to do now is put some aluminum foil on both ends to ensure that the system remains in electrical contact for the most of its rotation. Okay, so now we're going to construct the stator, the base for our motor, and it's important to get things carefully aligned so that they're able to turn properly. For this, we're going to be using two angle brackets for our magnet housing, and two angle brackets with slots for our rotor housing. And it's important to have these slots so that you can place them at certain positions so that the motor can actually be confined in the axial direction. Okay, so we're going to get the coil in now. Right, now we're going to attach the wires to our stator. You need two rigid wires for this because importantly, they're only going to be pushing against the commutator. So I've taken these from an electrical store and stripped them down myself, but you can find them however you want. So the last thing we're going to do is a beep test to make sure everything's electrically connected. Get our multimeter out again, and we're going to be testing our electrical connections. So, commutator works, which is good. Now we want to check that the brush connection is okay. So, I'm going to touch this end and that end, and the brush connection is good, right? Okay. So now. I'm gonna power it and see if it works. I mean, it should. Now we're going to attach the magnets to our setup. And of course, we want to make sure that the magnets aren't going to hit our coil. Now we're going to get a power supply and power the system. All right, we'll turn it on. All right, it did it. Did its best. Now it's getting current through it. There we go. Hey guys, Tom here. Uh, just talking about some of the more common mistakes you're going to be finding when you build your motor. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the placement of your axial supports on your rotor. What you'll notice here is that we're using some L brackets with slots in both sides. And that means we can move it kind of side to side and up and down. And how I like to do this is set up the system as it would work, turn on the motor, and then move the position of the axial mount with my hand until we get it rotating nicely. So you can see that there are kind of a few dud positions, right? Here it's rotating a bit slowly, we'll give it a bit of help. And you're going to find that there will be a position where it rotates rather nicely and consistently. Right, once you've got that, turn it off, screw it down, and make sure you don't ever touch it again. Now the second problem that you're going to find is poor electrical connection between your brushes and your commutator. Now to diagnose this, we're going to be using a multimeter set into amp mode and put in series with our motor. When I turn it on, we should see that we're getting some current flowing through our motor. And as I rotate it, what we want to see is that for the majority of the rotation, there is current flowing through the motor. Now, of course, you don't want current flowing through it 
when you're in the commutator breach area, but for the majority of the rotation, we should have a rather sizable value of current going through this. Again, if your current value is too low, maybe in the milliamps, your motor might not be generating enough torque, which is another problem that you can overcome by increasing the power or getting more coils. Now, the third thing I wanna talk about is friction because there are a number of sources of friction in your motor that are going to be fighting against the torque that it's generating. You wanna take a look at the axial mount points, make sure that they're smooth and that the motor can rotate relatively easily even without the influence of electric power. This is important because the friction generated by this system is gonna act in direct opposition to the torque you're generating. In addition, be careful about the connections between the wires and the commutator. If you've pushed them too hard in to make sure you've got a good electrical connection, you might be generating a bit too much friction. And we see this a lot with students who kind of sticky tape their wires together, that they are making sure they've got an electrical connection, but the friction is so high that the motor still can't rotate.